The front of my insurance total 2017 Volkswagen Golf R has finally been repaired, but there is still so much left that needs to be fixed. For example, all the airbags are still completely deployed and have not been replaced from the car. The dash still has a giant hole left in it. There's a ton of code still on the instrument cluster, and we even have this zero RPM reading when the car is running and on. And don't even get me started with the rear end of this car. This is the biggest of our problems. As most of you should know by now, and for those that don't, I bought a car on Copart, which is a place that mainly sells totaled vehicles online and in person. The reason I did is because I wanted a new challenge in my life, something that would test my abilities, and boy, did this thing deliver. This 2017 Volkswagen Golf R has proven to be one of the most challenging projects I have ever worked on. But over the past couple of weeks, I have been able to make some pretty good progress at least that's what I think, and hopefully you would agree. Now, picking up from my last episode, I was able to get everything fitted correctly on the front of this car, and off camera, I was able to align and adjust everything, which took a bit longer. I actually had to adjust everything, including the headlights, to make it look okay. But the one thing I haven't done yet is actually mount this bumper correctly. It's only being held on by two screws, and that's what we're gonna have to start off today's video with. <laughs> So first things first, the battery needs to get disconnected because I don't want to plug anything in while power is still going to it. This is just as a safety precaution not to short anything out. Then it's time to jack the car up and take the wheel off so I have room to work underneath and on the side of the car. I took the grill back off and the two screws holding the bumper on off because I need to reconnect the headlight washer lines and plug the parking sensor harness back in and I can't do that if the grill is still in the car. Then I can reassemble the bumper back on, putting back the two screws and reinstalling the grill yet again. And then the last steps are just putting all the torque screws around the sides of the bumper and the underside of the bumper as well. So the bumper is back on the car and everything is plugged back in. The parking sensors and the wiring harness is all connected and should be good to go, which means it's been a long time in the making, but I'm gonna plug in our OBD 11 reader and clear some codes and see what is left. Now, last time we checked, we had over a hundred fault codes and I'm hoping since we have a headlight plugged back in and the bumper plugged back in, we should have a lot less fault codes. Obviously airbags and that stuff is still gonna be on there and some stuff with the rear end which was hit, but we should still have significantly less. So let's kind of see what exactly is gonna happen. For those that don't know what an OBD 11 reader is and you own a European car, you're really missing out. With the car on and this device plugged in, it will actually scan the car for all the fault codes stored in the computer. Now, not only that, but this little device will even allow you to customize and unlock hidden features you didn't even know your car can do, and so much more. Now, on top of that, you can even long form code your car. If it wasn't for this device, this project would be nearly impossible to complete. So make sure you pick one of these bad boys up with the link down in the description below. So as you guys can see right off the bat, after giving this a scan, we have 118 flow codes, which honestly, is pretty scary if you ask me, but I'm gonna reset all the codes and see what's left and what we can start working on. So I just reset the uh, fault codes and rescanned the car. And we went from having over 118 fault codes to now having only 46, which is pretty incredible. I was really worried and my anxiety was going through the roof when I saw 118, but just a quick clear with everything plugged back in and changed on the front end, we've dropped it all the way down to 46, which is pretty incredible. Now, obviously there's still plenty of things that need to be done to this car, like all the airbags and stuff and then that should lower this back down, but I'm very happy seeing only 46 codes now. So in regards to the fault codes that we do have, most of these, I'd say majority of them, I, I'm pretty sure I can fix. As you guys can see, almost everything else is perfectly fine in regards to the sensors. Everything is coming up good. 
except for just a few. We do have engine fault codes, which isn't saying the engine is bad. All it's saying, which honestly doesn't seem to be that big of an issue, but you can see we have exhaust door valve, which when I looked in the back, I understand why that is because the uh, harness is severed. So I have to re-solder that all back. And then the front has the ambient air temperature sensor, which I did notice in the front of the car did seem a bit broken. So this seems to be a fairly easy fix. We do have brake issues, not really much. I'm just seeing, uh, let's see, just steering wheel angle sensor, tire pressure monitor, that's whatever. Not worried about that. Air conditioning is not a big deal. Adaptive cruise control. I have a feeling that some of the stuff in the front needs to be reprogrammed. The faults, you know, with the when we put in the module, it just says error value received. So maybe we'll play around with that later. But also I know maybe with this cruise control, the whole rear end of the car is disconnected. So a lot of those sensors are also disconnected, which could have something to do with it. And then most of the fault codes, as you can see here, is clearly the airbag. So we, this is what we're gonna have to work on now, which is starting to replace some of the stuff that has to do with putting on these airbag codes. And otherwise, the rest of the things seem pretty easy. Gateway, steering assistance, multimedia, which is a fault code on like all Audis. And that's pretty much it. And obviously driver assistance with the rear end being damaged, but. Those fall codes don't seem to be all that bad. I'm still so relieved that we went from 100, I just can't shake it out of my head, 118 fall codes down to only 48. And I'd say probably a third of them, let's say 10 are just error codes that will clear once we start fixing other things. But majority of the uh, the faults for the most part is from a lot of these airbag stuff. And that means we're gonna have to start off on this interior by removing the seatbelts that deployed and trying to find the SRS module and sending it out for repair. So fun fact that I bet most of you watching don't know is that your seatbelts are actually explosive and only have a one-time use. Yeah, you heard that right. You see, in an accident, your SRS module sends a signal to not only only your airbags to deploy, but also to your seatbelts, which ignites a small charge in the retractor and pretensioner that locks the seatbelt itself in a certain position to cushion your impact in a crash and put you in the right place for the airbag. Once deployed though, your seatbelts either need to be repaired or replaced. Now, in order to remove the seatbelts, I need to first take off the plastic trim that covers them. There's a little airbag emblem at the top of the trim that needs to be removed first because behind it is a sneaky screw that holds the trim to the pillar. With that out, I can now take the first piece of trim off. The next piece is easy to take off because it's only held on by some plastic clips. So with the seatbelt covers out of the way, it gives me room to access the last two bolts in removing the seatbelt, which is one bolt here and then one bolt all the way down there right here, which might be tough to access, but I'll try to make it work. Now, what's really weird about this car and because it's Volkswagen is the type of bolt that this uses uh, because it's European and it uses this special tool right here. This is called an M10 and you can see if it loads, it looks really weird and it's found on mainly these European cars and this is what is used to hold these on. So the last step would be to just unplug these two clips right here and yellow usually means explosive and believe it or not, this is an explosive belt. So I have to just remove these two. Using a special 10 millimeter spline bit that of course I've only heard of European cars using them, uh, I was able to remove the first part of the seatbelt. Next was removing this bracket with a Torx bit which holds the seatbelt to the pillar itself. And if you haven't noticed, I've been putting all the bolts back into their spot after I remove them so I don't forget where they go when I reinstall everything later. Then it was time to unplug the detonator switches from the seatbelt. I used a small screwdriver to pull the orange safety lever up and then I could slowly pull them out. With everything unplugged, I could focus on getting what I thought was the last bolt out at the bottom of the seatbelt. I had to remove the door sill trim, which was a pain, and then I had enough room to access the bolt. Using the M10 again, I was able to unscrew the final bolt that held the retractor in the pillar of the car. Tell me there's another bolt. 
Alrighty, so new plan. I thought I was in the clear to get the seatbelts out and it appears I'm not and I might now have to take the seats out in order to access the seat belts, which is a pain in the butt because it's literally one bolt that I can't reach and it seems to be like under the seat. So now I have to take the seats out. If only it was that simple, right? Fortunately though, removing the seats is pretty straightforward. There are a total of four bolts around the seat that hold it to the floor. These obviously have to come out. Then I can tilt the seat back just enough so that I can access this little secret compartment below the carpet. This uncovers the three connectors, which I believe send power to the seat, as well as the airbags in the seat bolsters, and probably power to the heating element that controls your heated seats. Now, I apologize in advance that my head's in the way, but I'll show you it up close on the other side, as there is a specific way to remove these clips. With everything unplugged though, I could pull the passenger seat out of the car, revealing even more seatbelt stuff than I had originally thought. Underneath the carpet is the pretensioner, which has a another detonator plug at the end of it. Now it's screwed down by two more M10s and a few plastic clips that connect the wiring harness to the top of the pretensioner itself. With everything unplugged and unclipped, you can then slide the pretensioner back and it just comes out. Next was obviously putting all the screws back to where I got them from. So with the seatbelt finally out of the car, I have to now figure out, cause I wanna put the trim back in so I don't forget uh, how to install everything back later on, but I'm having trouble figuring this out because as you can see, this piece here, this massive, it's I guess it's a two stage uh, seatbelt does not fit through this hole. So some way at the end here, there's gotta be a way to disconnect it and get it through. All right, so I figured out how you separate this, but basically you un you like, clip it open, and then once it's open, you can slide this piece out, and that frees this up by taking this copper clip out, and now I should be able to slide this through here, and then we can install it just like that back on the car. With the seat belt free from the trim, I can now go ahead and install everything back the way I found it. I'm also mailing the seat belt and pretensioner out for repair at a place called Safety Restore because I've heard good things about them, so I wanna give them a shot. And moving on to the driver's side, I started removing the seat first as now I know this will make the rest of the process easier. I'd attach the connectors using a small screwdriver when necessary, and hopefully this is a better view than before. Next, I could take the seat out. I'm done. I removed the small airbag emblem again, the screw, and then all the plastic trim that covers the seat belt. Just want to show you, you have to be extremely careful taking this off because there's a ribbon cable here, which puts the light on the, the door sill or the footwell. And you can see it is like paper, and I mean paper thin, and it connects right over here. I know this is gonna be so difficult to see, maybe I can zoom in. Connects right there. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Maybe I can do it on camera, maybe not. But that's what you gotta get off next. Speeding through the removal, it was time to remove the bolts with our special spline tool, unplug the detonator and remove the pretensioner from the floor and put everything back where I got it from. I also want to give you a better look at this seat belt clip. You have to open the plastic clip shield thing first, and then with a the small screwdriver, pry out the copper clip from the back that's holding it in place, and that will let you separate the belt from the pretensioner itself. So, seat belts are out, seats are out, and they're probably not going to be going back into the car until this dash gets fixed but 
The last thing I believe I need to send out with that is the SRS module, which is a device that tells the airbags to deploy when in an accident. And I believe this is, if you can see all the way under here, which we're gonna try to get, it's yellow. We should be able to unplug it, send that off to get reset, and we should be good to go. We out, baby. And for those wondering, that's how I did it. Alrighty guys, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you guys like it. We got the SRS module out, the seats are out, the airbags are out. I have to send, I believe, the module as well as the seat belts out to Safety Restore to get reprogrammed and reset and back in the car. And then ideally when we're ready and all the airbags are replaced, reset the airbag light and everything should be good to go. But that is it for today's episode. If you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm them and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, that's a problem. I got it stuck. Probably should have stuck with a ratchet. God damn it. I don't know how I'm going to get that out.